There's a number of things that can go wrong uh, with a simple identify friend or foe system, and you can find more details in the book chapter. Here, for example, um, is what happens um, if each um, uh, fighter um, goes out with a wingman, and if you don't have anything more than the basic protocol. The fighter says to the bomber, here's my random challenge N. And the bomber then sends back to the fighter's wingman the same challenge N. The wingman, if he's got his IFF system switched on, gives a response, and the bomber then reflects the response back to the fighter. So you've got to have uh, some means of um, identifying challenges that have come from your mate, and indeed challenges that have come from your own aircraft itself, because you don't want the bomber to reflect the challenge back at you and have your own equipment act as an oracle by giving the right answer. However, there are more complicated attacks. And here's an example from my book, um, which goes back to the late 1980s, when there was a war between the apartheid government in South Africa and a Cuban-backed um, uh, government in Angola. And um, what was basically happening is that the Angolans and the uh, South Africans were attacking each other's bases along um, the border between uh, Namibia and Angola, and the South Africans were occasionally attacking Luanda, the Angolan capital. So what happened here um, is that the Angolans waited until they saw South African bombers um, um, homing in on the capital, um, Luanda, and they then sent one of their MiGs over the border into Namibia. The South Africans then sent a challenge end to the MiG, which relayed it to Luanda, and the air defense batteries there sent the challenge to the incoming South African Air Force Impala. It provided the response, which was relayed back uh, to the MiG, um, which um, satisfied the South African air defences and managed to get through and bombed a South African military camp in northern Namibia, killing a number of South African soldiers. And this was actually quite um, uh, bad for South African morale because they thought that they were better than the um, non-white Angolan and Cuban troops that they were facing. And um, this played a role in persuading the South Africans to negotiate an end to apartheid. Going back now to the civilian world, two-factor authentication started in about 1981 um, with a product called the Recal Watchword, which appeared to be just a calculator. And Recal sold this to um, various post offices um, because they wanted to make sure that they could tell that their engineers logging onto systems were genuine. And this has since become a very, very common um, authentication mechanism. And in the original uh, Recal mechanism, how it works was as follows. Um, the server sends to the user a random challenge N. The user then pulls out his watchword, which looks like a calculator, except it's got a red button on it that says calculator response. And he puts in the um, random number N and his own personal identification number. And the um, device then calculates um, the encryption of P and PIN, of, pardon me, of N and PIN under a key KP, which is um, um, shared by the server. And this um, value is displayed in the calculator, and the user then types it into his terminal and sends it off. And if he's right, he's allowed to get logged on. OK, so this is the very, very basic two-factor authentication. So take a minute and um, sit down and see if you can think about how you might go about hacking this.